bad people who do heavy metal people. Green people, crab people who do heavy metal people. Green people, crab people who do heavy metal people. This is the Steamroller 2015 number two scenario called Two Fronts. There is Kill Box. You need five points to win. You get one for dominating your close zone, one for controlling the far zone, and two for dominating it. Uh, you can't do either of those, though, until you destroy the enemy objective. And if you do so, that's another control point. All right, guys, it's another War Machine Wednesday, and on this side here, we have Signar underneath Chris, and it's a Haley 2 list. It's what's known as Haley's Heroes, Haley and a whole bunch of these, you know, well, solos, and then you have things like Black 13th and stuff. And on the other side, we have the Convergent of Cirrus. This is the Axis tier, where you got like four of these guys are bringing you back, and you got all these AD troops. It really is a, a jam-type situation here. So there's lots of buildings down on the, the terrain, so that could be kind of uh, an interesting factor. But really what wants to happen here, or what the player is going to want to do, is that the Convergence player is going to want to surge forward, try and get in these zones and block everything out, and try and handle that feat, bring everything back, and try and score. And meanwhile, what of course the Signar player wants to do is trying to control these guys coming in, eliminate whole units, if they can des destroy the scary face bat bots in the back so they're not doing the recursion thing, that would really help too. So either way, the Convergence player got first turn, and everything is running on up. It's going to be kind of hard to see, but there's a unit of Clockwork Angels down at the bottom. Uh, there was another one that was deployed behind the house on the top. Uh, they're also going to be moving up here now. Now, he made a little mistake here with allocation. Not so much allocation, but how close the jacks were to each other. So, one of the jacks was able to run up. The other one just walks up. Otherwise, Axis puts up the Onslaught spell. And uh, that is really the first turn. Just trying to run up here, getting everything up there. So, now we're moving on onto the Signar turn one. And Chris is going to need to spend some time trying to figure out what exactly he wants to go for here. What he's going to be going after. Uh, first thing he does, is gets right in here with Haley. Haley is going to be popping her feet. She's going to pretty much be catching everything except for, say, the actual caster. And also, uh, I believe, one of the solos at the top there the scary uh, face bots but anyway she throws a time bomb into the group there and kills off a good number of them now he's going to be coming up here with Alexia 2, she's going to be blasting someone and stealing the soul. Uh, that's an interesting thing that's happening right here is both players are kind of fighting for soul. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, he also went and put the temporal acceleration onto the Stormwall. Stormwall came up here and it tried to take out one of them. The first one got shield guarded, but then with two shots, uh, even though average dice he should have got eight damage he spiked a little bit got the 10 and then killed one of those little recursion machines i really wish i could remember the name but otherwise puts down the covering fire and that's going to be pretty crippling i mean with them only being able to walk up and having those covering fires in the way there's not much they can really do um he had moved up there with Thorn and also with the Stormwall. There actually should be a little bit further back. We're going to be fixing that soon. But otherwise, he has Arcane Shield go up into the Stormwall. And then he tries to shoot up the lead Clockwork Angels at the top. And then, of course, uh, the Black 13th doing their thing. They're going to do a big, huge shot into there, killing a whole bunch of guys. Acosta moving up there. Now you can see where we're kind of fixing where the jacks are supposed to be. And so, yeah, they've done some really significant damage. Uh, the feed is up. So now we're back to the conversion side, turn two. They still can't score yet, but they need to somehow keep up this pressure. And one of the hard things here is that if his little bots in the back move up to make more of his guys, they can't. They can either make them now or move up and for them to make guys they have to be within three inches of an existing model so he's having a little bit of problems here of uh, the whole order of activations just because of this whole Haley two feet that's doing very well right now to shut that down so he's looking around for 
right now just trying to figure out how he's actually going to go with this. What his priorities are. Can he actually get on to anything? Uh, normally, if it wasn't for the feet, he'd come up, and especially for the infantry at the sprays, make more of them, you know, aim, come up, and just start spraying away all those, these solos. But right now, he can't. So instead, he's going to do the best he can. These guys down here are going to go into a shield wall and really just advance. That's all they can do right now. Same thing at the top, they're just going to move up. Uh, that's actually a spray unit, so they'd love to start spraying the Black 13th. They can't, so they just really move up. The one recursion bot moves up there and makes uh, three new guys, so starting that up there. Uh, here he's going with these guys going into shield wall. Again, just trying to walk up because that's the best he can do. You know, really has to just take his lickings for one more turn, and then if he can survive that one more turn, then he can really get in there. Otherwise, he's coming up here with his fourth unit, and then the jacks need to get up there too. So really just trying to advance, getting up there. Uh, this is also a kill box scenario, so Axis is also going to need to make sure that he gets up into an, an okay spot. And one of the definite worries in this list here is that Axis is his larger base. Uh, he can be assassinated, so he does have to watch out for that. Really hard from the hide. So right now he ran behind the Jack there, uh, which is also a shield guard. So he's hoping that keeps him safe, but it, it's pretty tough. I, I think if they wanted to, they could get there. Either way, we are now on to turn two for Signar, and he's going to start off here with Gorman throwing in a. A uh, little acid bomb there and killing off two guys, or three guys, I think, and then putting another guy corroded, so that's pretty good for him. Otherwise, just taking some more shots here. And now, definitely, after he's done that one turn of attrition, on this second turn, you know, he's not probably looking to get any scenario points. He wants to eliminate units. He wants to get the entire unit dead. Now, one of the things I didn't mention is that the angels on the bottom, he was able to come up and pod two of them. So if he kills the last one here, they're gone. And the angels at the top, they're pretty close as well. But these spray guys are also a big worry to him because he, you know, those spray guys, especially with the, the solos where they get to reroll the hit, that can be a pretty big deal. Otherwise, he's going here with the Stormwall. A uh, nice trick he did here is that he punched a guy in the back so that the Electra leaps, when they hop to the guy in the forward, uh, they don't get the whole uh, shield wall thing. So good trick there. Uh, he was able to kill off a few guys. He was probably hoping to kill more, but his right attack missed on that little grouping there. Otherwise, Black 13th coming up now. Uh, they're going to be trying to kill off the solo. First one misses, second shot hits and kills that solo. So again, that's the whole mini feat of re-rolling the hit. So pretty big deal to have that stopped. Uh, then Ryan shot her big shot, killed like three or four models. So really, they're really hurting at the top there. Uh, if I haven't already mentioned it, all the angels, clockwork angels, are going to be wiped out the top. And now he's going to be coming in here with his Alexia 2, who is able to make uh, her thralls. And the thralls are going to get do, do their fun thing, charge in and kill. Acosta will charge in and do some damage there. Uh, Thorin's going to walk up and try and do some stabbing down here. He actually hit them with a uh, time bomb first, killed a couple, and then Thorn tried to kill the last one, but just couldn't connect. So really, lots and lots of damage, big time attrition here. Uh, the Convergence player is kind of in a lot of trouble. Uh, it's now at the point where he can actually move up and start making attacks, but he's really lost a lot of models. Uh, he can kind of move up and try and make more and try and do something with that. But the whole question is, is it enough? And especially with that Stormwall, he has to make the call. Is he going to try and make an attack on Stormwall? Uh, is he going to try going up against Alexia? And so Michael's going to spend a lot of time right now just measuring, taking a look at this, and trying to look at his options. Uh, it does take a lot off of his clock, but sometimes when you're in this position and things aren't really looking that good, because uh, I believe at this point he has killed no models from the Signar list, you got to really say, is it worth it going on to attrition, or is there some way I can get the assassination? And if I can't, maybe that might be it. So he tries to spend some time, figure out how he's going to do this, measuring out this very carefully to get to Alexia. 
And at the time, you know, as a person watching, I wasn't sure if he was just trying to deliver a jack there or whether this is going to be part of a big beatback assassination. Uh, these thralls that she made and gone the way, they're going to clearly be something that he's going to have to deal with. But he's really just trying to line this up to see if he has reins. Now, he still has his feet. Now, remember, the feet makes it so that he gets the extra speed and the extra strength. And then the enemy will get the reduced strength and the reduced speed. So that's something. But uh, either way, now he's going to start off his turn. He allocated what he's going to, which isn't very much. And otherwise, his little recursion bots are going to come up, make more spray guys. The ones at the top are going to be mainly aiming, and they're going to be going for the Black 13th. Uh, it's even aiming, these guys don't have the best rats. They have a hard time hitting. Uh, they really tried to kill Ryan. Did not happen. They killed Watts, and they killed Lynch. Uh, but Ryan stays, and she passes her command test. So at least he, he killed the model now, so that's good. Uh, he also killed Gorman as well. So, yeah, getting some work done. Now the second unit of spray guys are going to come up here, and... Uh, he kind of makes a mistake here because what he actually goes for is he goes after Ayana and Holt. Now, the thing is that, first of all, they're really hard to hit, just like it was hard to hit the Black 13th. And when you finally do, he's just going to quick draw and shoot you and cancel your shot. But at the time, he had forgot about that rule, so he's going to be rolling a lot of attacks here. Uh, he actually does have the uh, UA here, so he is getting to reroll the hit. So, I mean, after he goes after these first ones, uh, he's going to be finally hitting, quick drawing, lose the shot, and then he kind of like just stops with it, realizes, you know what, I'm losing a lot of time, I'm just going to go for this. So the one jack comes in and kills off the one model, more so just getting out of the way, uh, and then Axe is going to go, hit the one guy, beat back, and try and get to Alexia, but unfortunately when we measure this, he is out of range and cannot hit Alexia. So I guess the plan he was going for is to try and beat back all the way to Haley. But the feet's up, but it's not really going to happen now. He runs another jack to kind of get in the way of Stormwall. And he just had to pass the, t the, the clock here. So now Chris is trying to decide if he's just go for the time or go for the assassination. Because really he could just run away and pass the clock. Besides, you know what, I'm going to go for this. Haley goes and hits Axis with a TK to turn him around and move him away from the shield guards. Uh, then he's going to start shooting him with a time bomb and her gun and all that fun stuff. And really, everything is just going to start shooting into it. Uh, the storm wall is going to go now and start shooting again, and that's where it's going to end. So the game just uh, ended here on assassination. So what are you guys' thoughts on the game? It was good. Uh... I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a very fun game. <laughs> uh, lost uh, a lot of models early, um, but got a lot of them back as Axis is wont to do. Um, this is was a terrifying to play against. Yeah, it, it, I got to get used to playing with this amount of models. Still, uh, I was running low on clock, so I went for you know getting Axis right up to Haley. And I wound up being just shy of melee on on, uh, uh, on Alexia. Alexia in order to be able to beat back in that direction. So I was sort of sitting back at that point. Yeah, I, was actually, I didn't want to say anything before because I didn't want to change anything. But that seems to be one of the weaknesses of this list is that Axis is on that larger base. So being shot at is a problem, yeah. especially if the shield guards get away. And Haley, she can work that range assassination, especially with Iris there as well. So I was kind of wondering if you get a get a range like an assassination off when he was back here, especially because of kill box forcing him forward. But well, once I killed the back Enigma Foundry on this flank, I didn't think I had to go for the range assassination as much because I thought I could force him to come up mm -hmm. because I could actually clear that zone at that point because I I firmly believe he has nothing in his list that can kill a Stormwall with Arcane Shield. And he doesn't have the spell, mm -hmm. right? And if at any point he does dump a bunch of focus into a jack and, and ship it in, mm -hmm. then the world goes into Axis the next turn. Yeah, yeah I mean, right? your your infantry have combined melee, so they can kind of do like one big smash, but, but they can only do so much before he, they get yeah. wiped. <laughs> and, and the thing is, I didn't get to do it, but what I really wanted to do was live the dream and do a power attack sweep and electro leap everything. <laughs> yeah. and, like, and just be like, oh, it's dead. It's all just gone. Yeah. But yeah, my, my strategy kind of coming into it was to take whole units off. Yeah, oh, no, right? exactly. I can't kill your foundries. I got super lucky killing that foundry. I rolled above average. It's about a 40% chance I actually managed to kill it through a shield guard. 
Um, and once I did that on the flank, that changes a lot, but I can't actually beat you in attrition, and I cannot beat you on scenario either. So it was always about forcing you to put Axis in a position where I could kill him. It's yeah. a lot like playing against Butcher 3, or a list like that, where yeah. he's the weak point. The list is so good that he's the weak point. And I believe, too, that with the time you kill the Foundry, uh, you did that with no focus, but I thought you were, you were camping two at that point. Is there a reason why you didn't give one to boost the damage or anything, or you just really wanted to camp? I really, um, Haley dies a lot, and whenever <laughs> I spend her whole stack, she inexplicably dies, even on her feet turn, hi Tom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think I've just got some PTSD when it comes to that. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I might have had a little bit better positioning to an extent, but I completely forgot about counter charge earlier on as well, where I would have been able to potentially counter charge the... The grunts to an extent um, might have given me a better position for this turn when I attempted to do that. That's true. But, um, I, I think one of the other problems you might have run into trying to beat back Alexia into uh, into Haley is she might have just died too fast, oh, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, but even if she died on the first hit, you know, I'd be in, I'd be up against the building kind of thing. Yeah, but I mean, I, 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 yeah. you can't kill her. Like, if, if that was your plan, I'd have gone all in on killing Eris. Yeah. Like, the whole army shoots at Eris. <laughs> Even then, it's hard to hit her, you know? But, I mean, he needs he needs 12s, right? Yeah. No, he needs an 11. Yeah. She's so 16, right? 1 in 12 chance. Right? So he's going to get it with at least one of them, in theory. Because as long as you leave Eris up, and, like, even on that, that run, like, I still had Savio and I still had Alexia, mm. who are actually, like... Super legit assassin, especially Alexia on a. Uh... Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for playing. And it was a great game watching. again. <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye.